complete. And good call out there that stage two locks loading is complete. Falcon 9 is now fully loaded with 1 million pounds of rocket grade kerosene fuel and liquid oxygen. Four, three, two, one, ignition, and lift off. Go through the go through the Be close to the down range. Stage one propulsion is nominal. T plus 30 seconds and counting, Falcon 9 has successfully lifted off from Slate 40 carrying the TurkSat 6A satellite. Now, after clearing the tower, we'll tilt or gimbal the engines on the booster to initiate a roll maneuver, which you may notice in the Stage 1 camera view. This enables the vehicle's antennas to stay in the Power best position nominal. in the best position for communicating with the ground. And in just a few seconds, we'll be throttling down the engines in preparation for max Q or maximum aerodynamic pressure. We should hear that call out in about 15 seconds from now. Vehicle is supersonic. Max Q. And there's that call out for Max Q. Now, as Falcon 9 accelerates through the thicker lower atmosphere, the air density decreases. Falcon 9 passes max Q, the point of maximum aerodynamic pressure, once the air density lowers faster than the increasing speed of the vehicle. Now, as the rocket continues to ascend, be sure to watch the stage 1 telemetry at the bottom left-hand corner of your screen to see these speed changes through ascent. The rocket typically needs to go 17,500 17, miles per hour horizontally in order to avoid being pulled back down to Earth and get into orbit. Coming up shortly, we'll have three events coming up in quick succession, and we should hear all of these called out by Mission Control, starting with MECO, followed by stage separation, and then SES-1. Main engine cutoff, or MECO, is where we shut down all nine M1D engines on the first stage to slow the vehicle down in preparation for stage separation, which is when the first and second stages of Falcon separate from one another. After stage one shuts down its engines and separates from the second stage, the booster will begin to make its way back to land, descending under the acceleration of gravity until it's time to relight engines for the entry burn. And second engine start one, or SES-1, is when we light the MVAC engine on the second stage for the first time. So watch out for these events happening just a few moments from now. Main engine cut off. Stage separation confirmed. And back ignition. And good callouts there for those three events, which again were main engine cutoff or MECO, followed by stage separation, and then second engine start one or SES one on the second stage. And coming up in just a few moments, we should hear the callout for fairing separation. And as a reminder, the two payload fairing halves are encapsulating and protecting the payload right now, but once the vacuum of space is reached, they're no longer needed to protect the satellite and will get jettisoned away. That should happen momentarily. Fairing separation confirmed. And there you heard that call out for fairing separation. We'll be attempting to retrieve both of these fairing halves once they fall back to Earth with our recovery vessel Bob currently stationed in the Atlantic Ocean. It's currently T plus 3 minutes and 50 seconds into today's mission. Now our next major milestone will be the first stage's entry burn, which will take place around the T plus 6 minute 16 second mark. Now to start the entry burn, we'll relight three of the M1D engines, which is similar to pumping the brakes to slow down the vehicle as it passes back into the Earth's atmosphere. The entry burn helps reduce the heat generated from the friction of the atmosphere and reduces the aerodynamic forces acting on Falcon, which helps maintain controlled flight and prepare for the landing burn. Now, during the entry burn, Falcon 9 is decelerating by firing its Merlin engines, but it's still moving extremely quickly, and this causes the vehicle to fly through Merlin's exhaust gases, or plume, which deposits a layer of soot on the vehicle's surface. And that soot comes from the carbon-based fuel that Falcon 9 uses, and with each flight, the soot builds up a little more on the outside of the vehicle.
The first stage supporting today's mission is flying for its 15th time today, having previously supported NASA CRS-26, Intelsat 40E, Empower 5 and 6, Avzon 3, Utilsat 36D, one OneWeb mission, and eight Starlink missions. Now, as a reminder, on the left-hand side of your screen are views from our Falcon 9 booster, the first stage, and on the right side is the MVAC engine on the second stage. The Merlins on the first stage are optimized for sea level, and these achieve 190,000 pounds of thrust each during ascent and descent. At liftoff, Falcon 9's first stage has thrust greater than five 747 airplanes at full power. Now the MVAC engine, with a much wider nozzle, is optimized to 220,500 pounds of thrust in vacuum. Coming up in just about 10 seconds from now, we should hear the startup of the entry burn on the Falcon 9 first stage. Stage 1 entry burn startup. Stage 1 FTS is saved. And there's confirmation of entry burn startup on the Falcon 9 first stage. This burn will last about 25 seconds and will slow the vehicle down in preparation for the landing burn coming up shortly. Stage 1 entry burn shutdown. And there's confirmation of stage one entry burn shutdown. Now coming up in just over a minute from now will be second engine cutoff, or SECO-1, on the second stage, along with the landing burn of the Falcon 9 first stage. The landing burn is the final burn of the Falcon 9 booster, and it's used to reduce the remaining speed of the vehicle in order to allow for a soft touchdown on the landing pad or drone ship. And as a reminder, we're attempting to land this booster on our drone ship just to read the instructions, which is currently stationed in the Atlantic Ocean. Stage 2 terminal guidance. And good call out there. Now, the Falcon 9 booster isn't the only flight proven aspect of this rocket today. The payload fairings supporting today's mission are also flight proven, with one half flying for its 16th time and the other half flying for its 10th time. Stage 1 transonic. Stage 2 FTS is saved. And good callouts there. We're now waiting on callouts for SECO-1 and landing startup in just a few moments from now. And back shut down. Nominal orbit insertion. And good calls there for MVAC shutdown and nominal orbital insertion of our second stage. Stage one landing confirmed. And there's that call out for our stage one landing. As a reminder, this was the 15th launch and landing for this first stage, and this landing marks SpaceX's 328th recovery of an orbital-class rocket, including both first stage landings for both Falcon 9 and Falcon Heavy. And with confirmation of nominal orbital insertion, we'll now have a roughly 